if you know that the derivative of a function, this word here, is the slope of the tangent line, okay? The derivative of a function is a, a function that gives the slope of the tangent line at any point. Up till this, up till now, when we were in limits here, you looked at the slope of the tangent line at a specific point, right? You calculated what's the slope of the tangent at a, at a specific point here. My messy uh, work here. But you went through and it, it looked like it came out to be a number, right? The slope at a particular point is that. We're going to, we're going to work now where you're not looking at a specific point, but we're, we're just saying in general, if that's x, what do you get as an expression? So being able to find another function, like for this function, we're going to have another function that is the slope of the tangent line. And that's called, that's what the derivative is. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. If you, if you know that, or if you go through this unit knowing that, that goes a long way to help your understanding here. The definition of the derivative is pretty much what we've had already. Limit as h approaches zero of the slope of the secant line. The slope of the secant line is just some point minus this other, the two y values over this, over h. Remember that if you have a picture for that, here's your graph. Um, if this is x and this is x plus h, then this is f of x plus h and this is f of x. You're just, you're calculating the slope between two points. And then you're pushing the two points closer together. Right? We've looked at that a lot before. Taking that one and pushing it down, that's what this is. This is the definition of the derivative here. Uh, applying the definition, I'll let you do that in a second. <clears throat> if you, what we've done before is find the slope of the tangent line, but we can look at a, at a specific point. Well, then we just use a specific value there instead, and your answer is going to come up to be a, a number instead of an expression. Okay, the, the, in the end here, I'll tell you what the derivative of this is. In the end here, when you go through this, you're going to end up with 3x squared. Okay, when all is said and done there and you go through the definition, you're going to end up with that. If you're talking about at a specific point, that's like what we've done before. The derivative of f at a specific point is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h, using a specific value there, minus f of a over h. All right? Oh, I put alternate here. Sorry, alternate definition. We are, this is, so this is one definition, and here's the alternate definition. Alternate. Um, the other way you could set this up is you could, <clears throat> you could do this. If you have a graph, Instead of calling this x and this x plus h, you can have two values here, and you can say if I want the if I want the slope of the curve at this particular point here at a, I can just say I'm going to put another point out here and call it x, and then instead of calling this um, something and something plus h, I can just call them two different things there. This is f of a, and this is f of x. And so instead you can just write it as, we'll, we'll talk about what it's the limit of in a second. The, the slope formula from there to there would just be f of x minus f of a over what? What's the distance in between there? x minus a. If we were doing this, this is not the limit as h approaches 0. How would I get the slope at this point right here? How would I get the slope at this point? What would I have to do in this situation? Remember before it was taking the points and moving them closer together. What would I have to do here to, to make it the tangent line and not a secant line here? Instead of that secant line, I would have to take x and move it closer and closer to a, right? So this would have to be the limit as x approaches a. This is one way to define it. This is the other way. This is at a point, right? This is not in general here, but at a point. In general, you can use this definition here. 
All right. Um, the reason that we sometimes the, the alternate definition we're not going to use too much, but in this situation it's it's helpful to be able to do this. You have to kind of work with limits the way you have worked with them before. I would start if you if you're wanting to find the derivative from the definition, start with the definition. Okay, that definition. Actually, I should tell you some notation first before we do this, but I guess for now we can call it derivative. The derivative of f in this case is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. I've forgotten something pretty critical there. The limit, right? Now I, I noticed that a lot of you on the on the quiz that we did last time, I went through and gave you a mark on it. I noticed a lot of you did this. You said limit of as something equals. It's not it's not limit equals. It's you're taking the limit of this, right? Limit of this. Like the derivative equals this. It's the limit of this. It's like the difference if you said I'm taking the square root of x plus 9. It would be like if someone said square root equals x plus 9. This this is an operation you're performing on that. It's not square root equals. It's not limit equals. It's something can be equal to the limit of this, but it's this is like an operation you're performing on this, right? You have an expression, and then you're looking at what is the limit as this happens. So just in some cases, I'm not sure if it was just a subtle you didn't you know mistake in writing it, or if you don't understand it. I think if you have that mistake in writing it, maybe you don't completely understand what it means. You can take the logarithm of a number, the square root of a number. You can look at the limit of a, of a function as something is happening. Then you can fill in the function here. We have x, f of x plus h. And incidentally, you have to keep writing this until you're actually going to evaluate the limit. This is x plus h cubed minus x, I'll leave it in brackets for now, cubed over h. I didn't leave myself enough space here. This is what it's going to end up being. You're going to have to remember some grade 12 stuff here, unless you want to do this the long way. <coughs> what is that equal to? x plus h cubed is x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed, right? Minus x cubed. You do the binomial expansion. I, I don't want us to get hung up in the algebra. I mean, if I was asking you something to do where it's to the power of six, I, I, hopefully you can put that into practice. Your what you learned last year. I remember why we're going through all of this simplifying here? Because if we try to evaluate the limit here, why can't we evaluate the limit here? Yeah, this this if you put zero in there, you can't evaluate it there. So the strategy is you try to simplify it and then substitute that in. It'd be better to not just start crossing stuff off. Don't don't do this and say that crosses off and then one of these and one of those. I mean, it's hard to follow your work if you start to do that. It's I know it's painful, but you can rewrite it maybe is better. The 2x cubed minus x cubed is going to disappear. So I just have 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed over this. And then you can divide by h. You, I, some of you are saying, well, you have to factor and divide. You don't have to, you can just divide each term, right? You're going to have 3x squared plus 3x h plus h squared when you divide by h. Now I can actually sub this number in. I can evaluate the limit. When you evaluate the limit, you stop writing limit as h approaches 0. At this point, I'm actually putting the number in. So I'm saying 3 times 0 squared plus 3, not 0, I'm not putting that. What am I doing? I'm not, this is h, right? h is 0. So I'll put it in for h here, right? I'll put it in there and we'll put it here. It will even... Make it a different color. And so what do I end up with there? 3x squared, right? 
Notice again, this is where I stopped writing the limit here because that's where I'm actually evaluating it. When you sub the number in. That means that this expression gives you the slope of this curve anywhere. Okay, we'll look at that graphically in a second here. 